I never, we never explained what the differences were in the terms before we jumped into all this. I, I want to get that out of the way for any listeners, just so that they're, you know, if we're mentioning them as we go. So if you could just sort of what you think are the differences between atheism, uh, being agnostic, right? People just sort of lump all these things together. Yeah, I've written quite a lot about that. Uh, I'll give you a link to a rather lengthy article I did about this because I argue with philosophers quite a lot. I don't want to. It's just <laughs> <clears throat> what happened was the people who defined the word atheism, uh, like uh, Matthias Knudsen, was the first person to accept the label, to, to accept the fact that the atheist label fit him. Uh, theism is God belief. Atheism is lacking God belief. So we're without God belief. So it used to be a pejorative for many centuries, you know, like from 500 BC, people were calling each other godless. And this included the Christians, you know, they would call the Christians godless and the God and Christians would call the pagans godless for different reasons, you know, different justifications, but <clears throat> that's what atheist was. You see, you're calling each other godless. And Matthias Knudsen realized that uh, he wrote, in 1674 that, yes, I am atheist because I don't believe in any God, but I am also a conscientarian because in addition to not believing in a God, I actually have a belief that there is no God. So what we would call anti-theism or strong atheism. Anti-theism. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah he didn't even consider yeah. it atheism. He, he, he just said, you know, this, he called it conscientarianism. Because, you know, he, it was a, ba he, he called it a religion, which, give him some credit to 1674 and he was the first person to speak in Europe. He's speaking out about, he's declaring himself to be an atheist at the risk of being burned for it. Yeah. So then a century later, <clears throat> Baron Dahlbrock also uh, rocked the, uh, the, the, the atheist label, but he did it proudly. He didn't call himself. He didn't, he didn't put the, he also distinguished the people who don't believe in God from the people who believe there is no God. He said the people who believe there is no God were fools. So he would be, he would be calling me a fool in that respect. But he, he was in the 1700s, and I'm in the 21st century. So I, I think I have an advantage over <laughs> So, I mean, I know there is no God in the same way, to the same degree, and for the same reasons that I know there are no leprechauns. Anybody who tells you that they know that there are no leprechauns knows that rationally, knows that according to evidence and logic that there's no leprechauns, but you can't absolutely prove with 100% certainty that there's no leprechauns. Just because they're impossible doesn't mean that you can absolutely prove it. Well, so, you can't prove a negative, right? That's always well, the Well, sometimes argument. you can, but, it, but in this case, you, it, this is one of those cases where you can't. You can't absolutely prove you can only get what ninety seven percent certainty. So I mean, yeah, I mean it's really hard to prove there is no God, right? If somebody said like prove there is no God, it's the same way. It's for me, it's the same. It's the same thing as saying if somebody were to say I can prove there is a God, I think it's the same thing as somebody saying I can prove there is no God. I, I don't know. That's how I see it. But you're, you're so confident. You're saying it. You a hundred percent think there is no no God. Period of any kind. There's not creator. even a possibility of God. There, there's it's, no possibility of God. That's that's crazy to me. How how can you say that? Just in order to say whether something, in order to say whether something is possible, because not everything is possible. You can't just say anything is possible because it's not possible for monkeys to fly out of your ass. It's not possible for a cow to jump over the moon. There's just there, well there's, here. Maybe on another planet. I'm just saying, I mean, uh, you talk to scientists and they say, well, maybe on another planet, gravity's different, this, that. Uh, maybe things do happen differently. I, I kind you of know, do agree that anything is possible. The strength of the, of, the, of the animal's bones versus the amount of force that its weight can produce get, or that its mu muscles can produce cannot establish, cannot come anywhere near close enough to achieve escape velocity. There's just Well, you're talking about hard. on this earth, though, right? Amongst right, our exactly. physics That's and what, our science. Okay. Right. okay. So, so it's not possible for the, the, you know, the muscles in a cow's legs to, to raise that you know, 1,500 sure. pounds or 2,000 pounds to escape velocity. That's, there's no I, I way agree. that's going to happen. You would I have to be on a different planet. You'd have to change all the parameters. But from this yeah. planet over the moon, no, that can't happen. It's not possible. You're right. And You're there's right. myriad other things that are not possible. So we can't start with the default. That, 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 you know. In order to say whether something is possible, 
there must be a precedent or a parallel or a verified phenomenon indicating that such possibility exists. Now, if we don't know that such possibility exists, that doesn't mean that we can necessarily say that it is absolutely impossible. But we can say, as I have, that there is no possibility. You want to say, well, well what, sure, there's a possibility. Okay, what is it? Yeah. And then nobody can answer because there is no possibility. Well, I guess if, my, if there was I, a possibility, you'd be able to show me what it is. That's that is interesting. I, I guess I, I I do see what you're saying. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, it's hard for me. Th look, the reason that I left religion, if you want to, you know, whatever, believing in God, was because it was such a definitive thing that I had to. It was 100. percent You're all in. Th there's no other way. There's no other possibility. And the moment I started asking about other religions and, well, how come they believe this over there? What what if they're right? You know, it, it just all went down a loophole for me. So. I sort of took that same approach with the other side of saying, well, if you're definitely going to tell me there is no God, you're basically saying the same thing as them. There is a God. You're, you're taking a definitive stand on something that I just don't see how you can understand. It's sort of the God of gaps theory, the opposite way. You're taking the theory of the things that do exist, right? And you're, and you're filling that in the same way people fill in the God of gaps. I don't know. That, that's just how I. Okay. So there's, there's more, seeing. there's more to it. Than that, I mean, so the reasons that I understand that there are no leprechauns, I've, I've argued with a Christian, a Dr. Pastor Bob Enyart told me that he knows for certain that there are no leprechauns based on the fact that there's no evidence of them, that somehow having no evidence of a thing is enough to know that it doesn't exist. Now, according to Hitchens Razor, that's fair, that what is asserted without evidence, positive evidence, positive claims require positive evidence. And what is asserted sure. without evidence may be dismissed without evidence. Yeah. So you know, unsupported assertions have no more credence than claims that have been proven wrong. Sure. You have to show me there's a there there because yeah. that's, that's the first thing. But then with, with leprechauns, we know that it's not possible. You know, most leprechauns are, are, are shown to be something like, you know, six inches tall or something like that. And it is not possible for a human figure to exist and function at that size. And then of course there's magic involved and magic alone is in defiance of physics. So, I mean, God is sure. defined by his miraculous nature, right? That, that everything yeah. he does defies the laws of physics. And, if, and anything that defies the laws of physics is physically impossible, and thus God is impossible by extension. And then all of the, the stupid excuses for why we, you know, if God had any effect on anything, if God could actually do something, there would, if magic actually worked, there would be people like Gandalf and Hermione and Spock and Obi-Wan who would be able to demonstrate that it works. And sure. even if we couldn't explain it, We'd have to admit that, hey, you know what? The, this guy came in and he was an amputee, and here this faith healer regrew that leg. We and we had documented this guy spent twenty years in a wheelchair, and this faith healer did that prayer. That guy got up, and we we checked the X-rays, and he's completely healed after twenty years. That's an isn't that amazing? But no, what ends up happening is that somebody walks in, gets a wheelchair, goes up on stage, stands up out of it, gets their money, and goes home. Sure. In the same condition that they were already in. Uh, yeah. If there was any truth to it, there would be evidence of it. But people make the excuse that there is no evidence at all because God exists. Uh, God is beyond time, right? Well, then there's no time in which he exists. Or, or God is outside of this reality. Okay. But that means he does not exist in reality. And it just, there's no... There's no logic to defend this. There's certainly no evidence to defend this. It's pretend. That's all it is. And sometimes you will get people to admit that they know that what they believe is not really true, but they're going to believe it anyway. Yeah, I know a lot of people like that, actually. They say that to me. So they admit that faith is just pretend, that it's convincing yeah. yourself of things. It's you more for not their true. family, right? That they're, they're like, well, I got my family meets there on Sunday, so we go. And you know, I was raised this way. You know, my mother would would kill me if she thought I didn't believe, right? Like those sort of things. I can relate to people uh, not wanting to cause any drama in their life, um, and just they go for the social function or the community aspect of it, the fellowship, maybe. Um, so here that, we I mean, have a Santa you know, Claus. We have a Santa Claus for grownups. But what makes that especially disturbing <laughs> is that it, that it controls so much of your life, takes 10% of your income to start yeah. with, yeah, right? And then manipulates your labor and exploits everything. So, so people, you know, religious leaders, look at all these religious leaders who make millions of dollars, you know, every year who have no training, no expertise. All they know how to do is lie convincingly 
right? You know, Creflo Dollar, has he even read the damn Bible? He, he, has, he has a number of jets, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And and he and he get, he gets up on charges for abusing his own family because he's he's just as immoral as everybody else, 100%. but he, he's he's able to get up on stage and say, "Give me your money," and they give him their money. You know, I'm a god man. I'm a blessed man. I'm, oh, he's blessed. Well, let me give him give him more of my money, and we'll stay poor in our trailer park. Yeah, yeah. There, there's you're no right. justification for it. There's 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 so much evil has been ascribed to religion, not just historically currently you know and there's yeah you know the 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 cure for bad religion is good no the cure for bad heroin is not good heroin it's no heroin 